Yeah, so in the next two hours, we are going to see Excel, of course, and on a broader scale, what we call as analytics. But that's not the only thing I'm going to cover. I'm also going to cover how to collaborate more effectively because whatever may be your job, you are going to work with others. And how do you manage your work? How do you manage collaboration with others is very important. And fortunately for you, you have access to entire Office 365 or Microsoft 365 set of tools. So we will cover both. There is no first half, second half kind of thing. These topics are interlinked because you can't do analytics without collaboration. So you should attend the entire two hour session. And while you are attending the session, of course, you will have questions. So you can post the questions in the Q&A panel. From time to time, I'll take a pause. I will monitor the question. We have a moderator as well. I will make sure all questions are answered. If we reach the time limit and there are some unanswered questions, I will certainly answer them offline. So with that, let's get started. Sure. So now what I'm going to do is I want you to focus on my session because it's not just a PPT. I'm going to show you a lot of demos. So two things. One, so that you can focus on it, I'm going to switch off my video. Second, if you have connected to this session on a mobile phone, you will not be able to appreciate the session and learn well because I'm going to show you user interface, actual software, where the font size may be a little small. So if possible, move to a laptop, desktop or a tablet, something with a larger screen. With that, I'm going to switch off the video and get started. All right. So we are talking about um, two things primarily, analytics and um, Office 365. But in general, when we are working, there are two types of work we do. I know you come from different uh, backgrounds, different domain. You will go into different industries. I understand there is a lot of variability. But uh, when we actually do whatever we do. You may be starting your own company, joining somewhere, whatever. What is the objective? We want to achieve something and we want to grow all the time. We are always wanting to grow more as an individual, as an organization, everything. Now, how do we grow? Let me tell you. All of us have some job to do, right? There is a job description. JD as we call it, wherever you join, there will be a JD. Or even if you are on your own, you will have your own objectives, which will be broken down into a job description. Now, the idea is very simple. If you are having a JD, that means the job which you are supposed to do, obviously you are supposed to deliver that job. And then people check, have you done it or no? So there will be some reviews periodically to check what you are doing is done properly or not. And you'll be surprised or probably you already know that every review, there is something left out. You know what is there in the JD, you are capable of doing it, but we don't end up delivering the whole promise stuff. So now the question is, if I want to grow, I have only three options. I deliver less than what I have promised. I deliver what I have promised and I deliver more than what I have promised. Now this is a no brainer. This is the only place where growth is possible. So that's what we should achieve this is common sense. I understand the problem is what is the bottleneck which comes in the way? Let's assume that you have all the components required to achieve your JD. Still, we are not able to achieve because of shortage of one thing and that is time. And that's where office comes into picture. Now you will say where is time and office related? Well, let me tell you. Probably you already have been using office tools, so you know, and probably many of you already have WorkX. So if you go to any environment, any office, small business, medium business, any industry, any country, 50% of the time people are spending on working on office tools. So when we are working, I'm just giving you some examples of work. These are just one sentence items of actions a typical HR finance marketing person would do. Don't read the whole thing. These are just examples. Now, of course, in order to perform this activity, you need to know that subject. That's your structured part of the work. But in order to 
create the budget for next quarter or the policy for HR. In addition to the HR and finance knowledge, you will need to get data from people. You will have to do meetings. You will have to get consensus. You will have to have a document which is corrected by multiple people. That's the unstructured part of the work. So whatever we do, half of it is structured, half of it is unstructured. Now you will probably have already seen and you will learn during this uh, stint of yours about how to optimize everything. We do business process engineering, whichever part of area of knowledge you have specialization in, obviously we want to be most efficient in that. But all that optimizations Business process engineering, Lean Six Sigma is about structured work. 50% of unstructured work is completely inefficient. Don't take my word for it. As we go along, you will understand. So this is what we are going to focus on today. And in order to do that unstructured part of the work, we have a lot of tools available. What are those tools available? Well, Office, everyone knows Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, maybe OneNote. If you don't know OneNote, you must absolutely know OneNote and start using it right away. I'm going to show you what you should do with OneNote. But fortunately for you, you have Office 365. What does that mean? That is a very, very important and very, very fortunate thing which is happening to you. As a student, Office 365 has many tools which probably you have not noticed before. So let me show you at least what those tools look like. All of them probably you have access to. Now the first thought is, oh, itna sara I don't want. time nahi hai. My work is getting done in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. So the question is, why did Microsoft create so many tools? They have nothing else to do. So that's not the way to think about technology. If there is a tool or a software available, why was it created? Because there was a need. So let's talk about needs and then find the solution. I agree that just looking at lots of logos is not neither impressive nor giving you some clarity. So let's talk about unstructured work and see what kind of things we do in unstructured work. So unstructured work means what? We do various things every day. For example, if I have to create an HR policy, for example, I'll have to start in a document in Word probably. But I will need inputs from someone. I may have to do some browsing. I have to get some references, then copy paste, send that draft file to someone, get inputs from them. All this is happening using email, chat, meetings, all kinds of things. So that is the unstructured part. So if we divide those kind of activities, it's unstructured. That doesn't mean it cannot be classified. These are the things we do broadly. We create things. And for that, we use these. We want to store things in the correct place. We want to execute work for each component of our need. We have solutions available. And we, of course, we don't have time to cover all these into our session. We are going to cover analytics, which is Excel and Power BI and some collaboration part. But because we are not going to be able to cover all the tools, doesn't mean they are useless. So I'm going to give you a very quick introduction in five minutes of what each of these tools do. OneNote is absolutely a lifesaver as a student and as a corporate citizen. So what does OneNote do? It's just unlimited supply of notepads. You create as many notebooks as you want and then create topics within those. These are called sections and within each topics you have unlimited number of unlimited number of pages. So practically you have as many diaries as you need. Start using this from day one. Take all your notes here. They sync on mobile as well. They work on all devices. And it supports handwriting, it supports scribbling, it supports OCR, all kinds of things. So if you have not done it already, start using OneNote after this session. Any other session happens after my session, all notes should go into OneNote. You can create as many notebooks as you logically require. In your case, probably each subject or field of knowledge will have a notebook and then you refine from there. The primary purpose of OneNote in today's context of collaboration is we do conduct a lot of meetings and whether you like it or not, you will be uh, expected to conduct and attend lots of meetings in life, COVID or otherwise. The problem is how do we capture notes? 
all of us take notes during meetings, lectures. When I say meeting, I'm also saying implicitly a lecture. Now, again, there is no standard. People, some people use mobile, some people use laptop, some people use paper, some people, people use all three and not, don't, don't take notes at all, whatever it might be. Irrespective of what you do, if I ask you a question, wherever you have taken the notes, can you find them easily after a few months? Generally, the answer is no. So that is where one note is very useful. It allows you to link your notes to meetings. So you go to the meeting, hopefully meeting is there in the calendar. This has to be Outlook calendar on the desktop, on the PC. And then right click there. Remember when you don't know something, you right click. So click on meeting notes. It will ask you, do you want to take notes? Yes. Then it will ask you which notebook should I put it in because hopefully you will have multiple notebooks. Choose the correct notebook and the topic. And then it adds a new page with all the details of the meeting. And now whatever you type here is automatically linked to the meeting. So six months later or whenever in life you want to find those notes, you don't go and search in one note. You, there is no file and folder to look for. You just find the meeting in the calendar, repeat the process, right click meeting notes and now Outlook will find the notes for you. This is very, very useful. Not only that, now you will say this is good, but this works on desktop on Outlook mobile, Outlook desktop app and Outlook OneNote desktop app. What if I like to take notes on mobile? No problem. If you are taking notes on mobile, this feature is not available. Still, what should we do? So let me show you what we can do. What happens here is when you take notes on mobile, you add, there is a OneNote app, add a new page, take notes on mobile the way you want, no problem. And then what do you do? When you start your laptop or desktop or whatever the device is, those notes will get synchronized with your PC automatically. And then problem is I have got that synchronized. So I got those notes synchronized here. And now there is no linkage to my meeting. So don't worry, everything you need is already thought of by Microsoft. So remember this very, very important thing, probably the most important thing in my session. If you need something, just assume it is available. It's a question of finding it. How do you find it? Not by going to Google, asking each other or going to help. There is a simpler way. If it's a localized problem, you right click, you will find the answer here. If it's a bigger problem, look at the menus. One of the menus will have it. That's how you learn any tool and especially office tools. So with that, I want this note or these notes rather, which I've already taken to be linked to my meeting. Meeting has already happened. So what do I do? I go to home tab and then there is a button here called meeting details and there I can link it to meeting in the past. So now notice this meeting got linked. That's how you can retrospectively link notes to meetings. Now you still are going to take notes on paper. No problem. Nothing wrong with that. Take notes on paper. After the meeting lecture, whatever is over, take out your mobile phone, add a page in one note. It will sync, take photos. It will sync on desktop and then link it. You already know how to do it. So bottom line, irrespective of how you take notes, you can link them to your meeting. This is called efficiency. Now you will say this product one note, how many people know? Hardly anybody knows. And how many use this to link? Hardly anybody. So you are already better than the world. Inefficiency is very rampant when it comes to office. And the moment you become efficient, you differentiate yourself and you will be able to achieve more with less effort. That's the whole idea. I'm not going to go into one note more because we have a lot of topics to cover, but just to cover all components as we were talking about, let's go and look at another set of components which you will need. Sometimes you need to create a web page. I'm not going to show you this part. If you have access to Sway, go to Sway, create a Sway. It's a web page without knowing what is a web server, what is HTML. You just provide the content and it creates a web page, gives you a sharing link. That's it. Easy way to create responsive web pages. Forms is something I'm sure you'll use because during this curriculum, as well as during your day to day life in corporate world, you are going to do surveys. How do we do surveys? We have lots of tools to do surveys. 
So one of the tools which is a part of this platform is forms and that allows you to do surveys. But you will say there are so many things which allow me to do survey. Why should I use this? Good question. So like any other tool, it allows you to do surveys, quiz, polls, data capture, but it also allows you to automate the process. We will see that a little later. The process is fairly simple. Like any other tool, you create the survey, test it, share the link. People will fill it. You will get the data and you analyze it. Nothing complicated there. But what happens is just to show you what it offers. Now, this is one way of data capture. By the way, we are talking about data analytics. Where does the data come from? Data can come from a business system like a ERP, finance, HR, accounting, whatever, or it can come from a survey. So this is a method of capturing or input data. So we have different types of questions available. What is Likert? Likert is a matrix like this, typically used for feedback forms after training, but not necessarily limited to that. What is Net Promoter Score? You will see questions like this all the time, even on lots of mobile apps, websites, OTT sites, you will see this. So this is a Net Promoter Score. Why is it called Net Promoter? Because it's analytics shows like this. The statistics is not just how many people said 1 to 10. It actually shows you overall result, how many people are promoters, how many are neutral and how many don't like whatever you are doing. So various kinds of questions can be asked. And finally, when you are ready with the, with the questionnaire, what do you do? You go and link it, create a link. It can be an internal link or external. Typically, in your case, you will use external links and then this link, QR code, all of that can be created here. And then as the data accumulates, data can accumulate anywhere. This is a purely browser based software. And then you will get live analytics of this. And of course, you can export to Excel and analyze further. That's how this is done. In the same way, this is also useful for creating evaluation forms like a quiz. So we create a multiple choice thing and you can also decide which is the correct answer, give a hint and give points to it. And then it will give you a score and analyze it. You can analyze each person's performance and so on. Now though, this typically any survey tool will do. What this allows you to do is more. What does it allow you to do? As I showed you, this is not an isolated survey tool. It's a part of this family. A platform as we call it. So it integrates with others. For example, when you submit a survey, you want someone to look at what was submitted as soon as the submission happens and then respond to it. So if the feedback is low, you want to send an apology mail. If the rating is high, you want to send a small voucher to the customer. If the feedback is poor, then you want that find out why the feedback was poor and then send a mail to a departmental head or add a task for someone. So that is called automation. And this component of Microsoft 365, which you have access to, is a zero coding solution for automation of activities in business. You can absolutely use it during your Wellinker days as well. So you go to Power Automate. Power Automate is looking at all these people. It knows what all of these are doing. You just have to go and tell Power Automate. You monitor this form. Whenever someone submits, I will tell you what to do. How do you tell Power Automate what to do? This is how you do it. You go to Power Automate. This is called a trigger. The starting point of an automation or a workflow or a process. You don't want to manually keep refreshing this for 15 days. So let Power Automate do it. You get the feedback, then as soon as the form is submitted, Power Automate will wake up. It will check one of the questions is the rating or score. If yes, what to do, if you know what to do and so on. This is how this tool called Forms is really differentiated itself from all other Forms tools because all other Forms tools may have more features, but automation is missing because they are working in isolation. This is a platform. This is not a random collection of apps. That's the most important part. Now with that, let's talk about where to store files. And this is very important for analytics also. Most probably you're storing files wherever you feel like. That's a bad idea because files are you, correct? Every file is your output. It's your progeny. 
so you should protect it, you should pamper it. So unfortunately, most people still store files on desktop, local drive and something like that. They don't understand the importance of what you already have. If you store files on local drive and you will need inputs from someone, you'll have to send copies of those files to people. And then what happens? You're going to think this input on this file I want from these people. Is it urgent or not urgent? If it is not urgent, I will send mail with attachment. If it is urgent, I will put them in a group chat and dump the file there. In either case, I got multiple copies and then they will hopefully reply, copy paste, copy paste karega, iska bhi pagar milega. But what is the point? Are you really using your hands or brain? So when you use hands, brain is idle. That means it is inefficient. Even if the entire world is doing it like this for 30 years, does it require you to be an expert in anything to say that this being called teamwork is a joke? As a team, we are spoiling each other's lives. So think, do I really want to be inefficient consciously? No. So what is the root cause? The file is going to people. That's the problem. That's why copies. So logically, what is the solution? Keep the file in one place. Let people come to the file. Very good. Then no problem. So that one place is called OneDrive for business, which you have. Now don't say I use Google Drive or Dropbox or XYZ. I know you continue to use that for personal use. For business use, use OneDrive for business. Why? Because not because I am saying it, but because business data needs to be protected. Now, of course, right now you are studying. There is no business data, but get used to the professional way of doing it from day one. Why am I saying that? Because if you leak your customer's data, there are a lot of regulatory and compliance requirements. You don't have to know all of them. When you store them on OneDrive for business, all these compliance standards are being followed by Microsoft. So implicitly your risk goes down. And of course, the other aspect of this is where are you going to create most of your data and files using Microsoft platform? So obviously, what is going to integrate with that a cloud created by Microsoft or cloud created by Google or Amazon or XYZ. So OneDrive is created by Microsoft. Word Excel PowerPoint Outlook is created by Microsoft. Windows is created by Microsoft. So they work beautifully with each other and you get direct benefit as a result of this. So once you store a file on OneDrive, life is good. Why is it good? Because let's take an example and see it very soon. But why is it good? Because now you don't have to struggle and juggle so many copies of the files and say, uh, well, latest kidare. You will always have one file which is under your control and you can stop sharing at any time. So from safety as well as efficiency point of view, life is much better. Now, when you store a file on OneDrive, it is still available on local drive. So you can still work offline. No problem. And in addition to all this, you get 12 benefits. So I'm going to show you a slide which shows you the benefits of storing files on OneDrive. Before that, make this rule, at least the study related files and corporate files, you must store never on this PC. This is your enemy. This is your friend. Why am I saying that? Not just because I want to push. By the way, I'm not from Microsoft. I don't get any money or commission from Microsoft, if, whether you buy it or not. I don't sell any software. Why am I saying this? Because you are starting your career right now and start it the right way. I do sessions for top management of hundreds of companies every month. None of them are efficient, which is a good news for you because on day one, it can be a differentiator for you. So what are the benefits of storing files on one track? Now, the next slide I'm going to show you is a busy slide. Take your time, read it, and whatever you don't understand, ask questions. I'm going to take a pause to drink water. Yeah, I, I already answered that in a way. Of course, if you compare forms, uh, Microsoft forms, Google forms, or whatever forms, Survey Monkey, obviously some features will be there, some features will be here. But what I'm trying to tell you is the platform integration is what differentiates this. And because you are going to use uh, the entire platform, might as well try 
Microsoft Forms first. If there is some feature which is there in SurveyMonkey or Google Forms which is not there in Microsoft Forms and you use it for your business purpose, by all means use that, no problem at all. Yeah, so let me quickly show you. Anyway, we are supposed to cover Excel and we are supposed to talk about how to handle files. So let's start with that. Now, before we do that, we have a simple problem. Every day you are going to be sitting in front of some kind of PC with a screen and staring at it for hours and hours together. That leads to eye strain. Here is the way to reduce eye strain. What is the way to reduce eye strain? Very simple. You go to file menu. You go to file menu. Options and general. And under general, you will see office theme. Are you able to see the zoom? Yeah. So go to that office theme and change it from white to dark gray. Now what happened? The amount of white color hitting my eyes goes down. Of course, the document will still be white, which is under your control, but at least the user interface. Now, where did this change? Not just in Excel. It changed in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote. So do the same thing for Teams, do the same thing for Windows itself and any other apps you use. And nowadays, most of the apps follow the Windows theme. So if you just change it in Windows, it should affect all of them. Obviously, it happens on mobile anyway. So this is a simple but important part of ergonomics. Reduce eye strain. Now, let's create a file and see how it works. And because we are talking about Excel, let's talk about efficiency from data point of view also. Let's mix the two. Now, when it comes to efficiency, in the context of Office, it's very different from how different uh, fields of knowledge think of efficiency. The way a manufacturing person thinks about efficiency is different than the way a marketing person would define efficiency because that's specific to their core job. But when we are talking about unstructured, it's not core to anybody. Everyone is doing unstructured work and in unstructured work, there is no finance unstructured work and marketing unstructured work. Unstructured is unstructured. So unstructured work, what is the efficiency definition? That is very poorly defined. Most people don't even know. Most people think Kaam ho hai, that means achha hai. Kiya? Farak nahi padta hai. that is wrong. So exactly what does efficiency mean is if I'm getting some work done, it should be done in the fastest possible way. A very simple, easy to understand definition. And unfortunately, in the entire world, it is exactly reverse of what I just said. Here are some live results from a engagement I did with a customer. This was a bank in Philippines. I sat with their finance people and let's say, show me what do you do with Excel. So they said, we do budget, this, that, that. We take this much time. I showed them how to do it correctly. And this was the reduction. So many people think, no, no, I am here office. Aata hai. Nahi aata hai. Please understand. Office aana impossible hai unless you have put explicit proactive effort. Most of us have learned office by trial and error. And right now you're starting your career. But even if you bar ask this question, 15 years later, are you really going to attend some extra training on all these tools or even Excel? Even if you attend some training, are we going to cover all the features? No. So, bottom line is, when you have a job to do, you do it. You ask someone, you go to Google, jo milta hai, karta hai. Kaam ho gaya, kaam ho gaya. Kaisa kiya, koi pucha hai nahi. That is what leads to inefficiency. So, nobody is going to ask you and look at where you are clicking. But it is in your interest to not waste time. And imagine the amount of waste of time. This is not few percent of improvement. This is thousands of percent days of improvement per activity. And this is what leads to waste of time. So you remember what I said earlier about our job description. What was the biggest bottleneck we had in order to exceed our job description? Time. So time is in short supply. Why should we waste it in doing some random copy paste when there is a better way of doing it? That's how office is very important. It will give you extra time. You can actually create time by using office more effectively. So how does all this happen? And how do I know what I'm doing is efficient or not? Nobody is going to tell me. So let me give you an example and then we will understand. This is some data. There is a formula here another formula here, pivot table and a chart based on the same data. 
Now when I add more data next month, what is going to happen? I know what happened next month. Excel doesn't know. Okay, done. My job done. Is my job done? No, absolutely my job is not done. It has just begun. Why? Why is it not be, uh, finished yet? Because someone has to go, someone means me by the way, and figure out which are the formulas I have to change. Is this your job? Really? No, absolutely it is not your job. But we do it. We means not you and me, the entire world does it and we get salary for it. It's disgusting. No, you have to say, this is not my job. Excel doesn't know what happened in April. I will tell Excel. Baki ka kaam Excel karne do. Why should I do Excel job? So whenever you get that thought in mind, this is not my job. The software should be doing it. That means your process is inefficient. Any software, not just Excel or Microsoft, it designed to make our life easier, not more difficult. So what is the answer here? Well, you have to tell Excel to do it for you. So before you add anything, go to insert and click on table, create a table and then job is done. Now, let me add the same thing. Now notice the formulas change automatically, the chart changed automatically, the bottom part and the right part of the table suddenly became active and it goes on and on. Pivot table by design requires a manual refresh otherwise the performance goes down. This is called efficiency. What did I say just now? How do you detect inefficiency? If you did not know this and trust me 99.9999% people in the world as we speak don't know this. So you are already better than the world. So how do you detect inefficiency? Three methods of doing that. I showed you this example so that you understand. If you did not know this, you would be repeatedly going and finding formulas. You may even be missing some. So, any kind of repetition which doesn't add any business value. That means my method is inefficient. Right now, if I was doing that, I would have a Maya thing in mind. Am I helping Excel? Sorry, that's not my job. And as I said, even if I do it, I am using hands. Brain is idle. How will I grow? I will just have arthritis. So, three simple benchmarks of efficiency or rather detecting inefficiency. Then efficiency, of course, I have told you how to find. If it's a local problem, right click has the solution. If it's a bigger problem, some menu has the solution. Like in this case, we had insert table. Now with that, let's switch tracks and talk a little about data. What is data and what do we do with it? We, irrespective of whether you have work experience or not, I'm sure you have got some data in life and worked on it. So when people get data, what do they want to do? And this is a specific thing about Excel, by the way. Specifically about Excel, but generically about all products. If I ask you, what do you want to learn in Excel? Everyone in the world will tell me advanced Excel. Kisne bola which topic is basic and which is advanced. So remember, there is no such demarcation. I will tell you the real difference between the two a little later. But broadly, when we talk about data analytics, whichever tool you use, we have to first get the data from somewhere and then you want to analyze. Okay, understood. But why is there a gap here? Because there is an activity involved typically which is called cleanup and that generally takes much longer than you would like and that leaves less time for analysis so we will see how to improve cleanup and we will see how to improve analysis both so how to improve cleanup is make that data clean enough so that i can analyze it effectively so cleaning up improvement is what that's operational inefficiency which we are trying to improve but analytical also there is inefficiency assuming the data is clean and now I am analyzing it I may analyze it also inefficiently so we have two types of inefficiency to take care of operational and analytical we will see both of them as we go along so how do we clean up data we will see but before that what is clean data and there is no definition everyone thinks if I give the same data to 20 people or all of you, how many people we have, 600, uh, and say clean it, everyone will clean it. But all the 600 cleaned up version of the data will match? No, never it will match because nobody knows exactly clean up means what. 
no definition, no clarity. So again, a busy slide. What I'm talking about is data. Data means input data. So just to tell you what is input data. This is input data. This is output data. Or this is a report. This is input. Input, output. This is also input. From this, I can't scroll and understand anything. I'll have to summarize it and make something worth analyzing. So I'm talking about what is clean input data. And only when you have a correct idea about what is clean data, then you can clean it efficiently. So again, I'm going to show you a slide which has a lot of content on it. I'm going to take a pause, read it carefully. This, all of them may not make sense right now. I'll give you a link to detailed video on this. Generally go to YouTube and search for Efficiency 365 by Dr. Nitin. That's my channel. There you will see a lot of videos detailing all this. So these are the rules for input data. And that cleanup means what? This is like a checklist. When you look at the data, look at each column and say, does it have a heading? Yes. Does it have blank heading? No. Then you have to fill it up. Then does it have duplicate? You have to manage the duplicates. Like that, you say, okay, okay, okay. If all 10 okay, then data is clean. If something is not okay, then you have to repair that. That's the cleanup activity you have to do. So that's what is good data checklist. Now, how do you clean up? Again, no standard. People do whatever they feel like. So I'll show you some methods of cleanup. For example, we have data like this and I want to split it into three columns. Now, how do I split it into three columns? Again, 600 answers I'll get because nobody taught anybody what is the optimal, best, efficient way of cleaning up data. So, whichever method works by going to Google first result, that is assumed to be the best and the only method. That is absolutely wrong. So, remember, if I have a problem, I have to find the solution. Now, this is a problem about data. Where should I go? Definitely a tab called data, right? I'm not putting formulas. I'm not changing page layout. So simple process of elimination. You say the yeah, no, 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 ha, yeah, either hoga. Chalo. I, no problem. Look at it. How do you read a menu? By the way, first go to the groups. Now notice many of these things have vertical lines. These are logically grouped commands. So look at the group names first. Do not read the button names and get confused. Get and transform. I already got the data. Queries and connections. I don't have connections. Data types, I don't know. Data tools, yes. Now, some people who know Excel will say text to columns, yes, but text to columns is also a bad idea because text to columns, so you'll say delimited space, whatever. There will be some extra spaces and then it'll break like this and then you're struggling again. Copy, paste, who is helping whom, hands or brain. So, no. So, now this text to column is increasing my work. So, what should I do? Look around. So next to it, one millimeter away, there is a button, which again, nobody has noticed. That's called flash fill, flash fill. What does that do? It is saying, just give me some example of what you want and I will do it for you. So you just type what you want and then click on that button. Control E is the shortcut, E for elephant. Done. That's easy. so easy. This feature is there for, I don't know, till uh, nine years now, something like that. Hardly anybody knows it, but now that you know it, you can use it. So this is a very quick and easy thing. This is not a formula. If you add more data here, you'll have to apply this again. So this is not going to automatically drag as a formula, but it's a lifesaver. Lot of time can be saved. Like this, there are lots of powerful mechanisms of importing and cleaning up data. Now, this is a special case, which is here in data tools because we already had the data, but many times we are importing data from somewhere and while we are importing it, we want to clean it. Where is that going to happen? So this is your best friend for data cleanup. It's called get and transform, get and transform. Before you do any data cleanup manually by putting formulas, by writing macros or whatever comes to your mind, check, can this thing do it? Because this is the single most important part of Excel. All the analytics comes later. If your data is not worth analyzing, how will you analyze? So this is the preparatory stage where you spend enormous amount of time. Otherwise, this part will allow you to import data and clean it up.
how to clean it up we will see a couple of examples but just go and explore this part there are a lot of training and materials available learn from them question is where can it get data from so all kinds of places you see from other excel files from text from xml pdf files also a lot of people struggle to copy paste tabular data from pdf if you have multiple files in a folder same structure whether there are three files or three thousand files you just give the folder and it will automatically consolidate data so a lot of extremely powerful stuff is available here we will not go into details of that because i want to focus on analytics part but you must absolutely read this part in fact uh, on 20 what is today's date on 25th next saturday i am doing a free live event on how to clean up data if you want you can join i'll give you the link later so now analysis analysis what exactly does analysis mean so let's take some data i have some data here seven columns 800 rows 2600 whatever now if i scroll 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 i'm not going to understand much i need to analyze means exactly what so let's understand the meaning of what exactly analytics means in real life what is this data this data is some transactions in some city someone spent using silver card for food this much amount okay now what am i trying to understand how are people spending which cards are they using something like that so let's define analytics in simple language what is it i am trying to learn something useful from what the data i have now i already have the data means it has already happened historical data and then what do i do with that knowledge i will find something yes i will find something useful also yes but what can I do with it? Can I change the past? No, I cannot change the past. So I'm going to use this knowledge to try and improve the future. Now, if I don't do any analysis, future, toh wala hai. future is not waiting for me. Even there is a random chance that the future will be favorable to me. But by learning from past, I am going to do something proactively, which will increase the probability of future being favorable to me that is how i will manage my business and drive growth that's the purpose of analytics just take a few seconds to imbibe this thought now having said that question is how many useful things would you like to learn yeah obvious question now that is where the entire world is having a problem answer to that question can also be called this i have this data how many reports will I ask for? It's the same question. How many useful things do you want to learn? So typically, what is the answer? How many reports will get created? Whatever boss asks for. Boss asks for 5, I give 5. Boss asks for 12, I give 12. Okay, fair enough. But then, what is our logic? Learn useful things. How many boss asks for whatever number? That is enough. Does it sound logically correct? Boss asks for 4, 12 few basically right there could be an equally useful 12 13 27 thing nobody asked nobody saw that's a loss of business opportunity on the other hand nobody asked but someone proactively went and found out all possible useful things then that's an advantage to you that's a competitive advantage that will drive growth so this is called efficient analytics if you are creating finite reports it's called inefficient analytics now question is I don't want to create infinite reports and keep wasting time on one piece of data hoping that I will find all use useful things. No, there has to be a better way of doing that. So how do I go from few to all possible? So that brings us to the concept of efficiency means I want to achieve more than what I was but I don't want to spend more time on it. So what is efficiency? We are going to put some effort and we are going to get some output outcome. So I want to minimize this and maximize this. This is impossible in manufacturing. If you want to manufacture more physical items, you have to give more input material, raw material. But in office, we can actually reduce input and get better or more output. In fact, all the features of office are designed with this simple principle in mind. If you are not getting this that means you are using this product incorrectly. If your effort is more and output is less, 
that means inefficiency so it's a good benchmark to have as well so with that this slide looks very nice but how do you actually do it the answer is again here where menus there is a button here called analyze data this button will be available to you only if you are using the office 365 version of excel which i strongly suggest all of you download and install today from your website your it team can help you there just go to office.com login using wellinker id and there is a download now once you have that you can click on analyze data notice this is raw data i have not done anything here i am just going to click on analyze data and see how brilliant it is it actually picks up your data puts it on microsoft's machine learning algorithm and that data is analyzed thoroughly thoroughly means what every column is correlated with every other column statistically and then whatever it finds useful relevant or interesting or statistically significant is shown to you on platter it did not ask you which reports you want it gave you useful things potentially useful things now some of them maybe you already know fine ignore them go to the next one do you know this it's saying there are two large transactions why are they large why are such abnormal transactions happening maybe it's normal in your business maybe it's abnormal if it's normal ignore it if it is not normal then you found something useful also look at this it's showing some more so it's your duty to go and look at all the data notice it's showing you a variety of different visuals depending on what it is trying to highlight or depict this is a frequency distribution of age which basically shows even though there is nothing in x axis these are younger people these are older people older people are not doing whatever this data is so if that is the structure of your business fine if this was a surprise to you you will go and find out why older people are not purchasing my products similarly this is a scatter chart of age versus amount it shows an outlier here amount high and young age that is not normal pattern how this young person did this transaction very interesting thought it may be some abnormality data entry error someone stole from father or it could be an opportunity to start a new segment for younger people this is called applied knowledge this is called real analytics now just to give you an example this was one piece of data now let me go to another piece of data similar columns similar rows i am again going to click on analyze data button of course it is going to give me different results but look at how many results depending on the data the number of reports change in fact tomorrow if this was the data and it gave me 36 reports next month i add more data i have to click again because the statistical correlations have changed so this is the best practice look at your data click on that button at least eyeball them and then take action on whatever you feel is necessary is that enough now look at this what is it telling me let me show you one of the trends what is it saying month feb amount decreases why is it showing me only feb why not jan this is basically saying it looks like there is a downward trend of business in february what does that mean linear regression the r square here is greater than 0.5 so here why is it showing me only feb because in all other months it's not statistically significant but behind the scenes it has gone and done that so that is what it means less effort more impact as though this is not enough it, you can also ask questions here how do you ask questions it has even given questions based on your data so let me go to india data and do this again notice i have these columns it has figured out what are columns i have and suggesting questions tell me average age for month excluding jan you just have to click and it give you results and then you want to analyze further click on this plus sign it will add a pivot table this is a regular pivot table without you having to make it and then you continue analyzing further but does it mean you are limited to these questions no absolutely not these are just sample questions so let's say i am saying top 3 what city by amount no problem done this is the power of ai based analytics most people who have this version of excel in corporate today don't notice this button that is loss of opportunity and inefficiency 
So with that, let me take a pause and see if there are any questions. Yes, sir, any specific questions you want me to handle or should I just scroll and decide? There are some questions related to a short term course hmm. on office. Ah. Seeking your YouTube channel link. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, got it. I will send, uh, post the link, don't worry. And uh, short term course, yes, there are short term courses, but I suggest at this stage, you are anyway in learning mode. I will tell you how to learn while you work. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some other aspects. When it comes to Excel, the one of the most common things used uh, for analyzing data, this is automatic analysis, right? You may want to do proactive analysis based on exactly what you want. There also we have various tools available. So let's look at that part first. One of the common things, so one of the commonest things which people do in analyzing data is pivot tables. So let's look at uh, pivot tables and how to use them. Uh, this is a very common requirement. The requirement for pivot table is the data must be clean, right? Data has to be clean. You know what is clean data, how to clean data, I have not shown you yet, but assume the data is clean for now. Don't create reports manually. For example, I want, there are different uh, card types. I want total by card type. Most people filter by card type and then drag and no, 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 that is, someone has asked me, how do I know what I'm doing is inefficient? If you get the feeling that you are doing something repetitive, brainless, and you are helping the software, that means it is inefficient. So what do you do? First, make sure it's a table, then go to this one called pivot table. In pivot table, of course, insert pivot table from table. This dialogue may be a little different depending on your version, but same thing. And then it will add a new tab, which allows you to create a report. Now this shows you all the columns you have, and this is the empty report. It's a good idea to drag and drop it here so that both are next to each other. Now you decide. It has given me four areas. What are those four areas? Rows, columns. So I decide what should go in rows. I decide what should be calculated. Calculations happen in values. So in this case, I want card to go in rows. So cards came in rows. Cards came in rows. And, and what happened? I want amount to go in values. So this is how you get it. Instant, easy. There's not a new feature there for whatever, 30 years. But still many people don't know it. Please start using it. This is the easiest thing to do. I can just drag drop whatever I want. So instead of card, I want gender. So just remove it, put it. This is gender. Okay. I want gender on columns. No problem. Columns. I want both. No problem. Like that, I can keep on doing this. I don't want card expense type. There is only one. I want card type. Okay. All this is easily possible. So this is how you create reports quickly. Now, when you create reports, this probably some people who know pivot table will know, but there is much more. And if you want to know, someone was asking how to learn, just keep right clicking. Every button in the right click is an answer to a question, what can I do here? So let's look at this and see how it works. So notice what has happened here. This is a very simple thing. I have four rows and two columns. Have you understood this data? Probably yes. But in order to understand it more effectively, would it not be better if I convert this to percentage? So let's take a simpler example first and then go ahead. I'm going to choose months and put amount and then see, yes, this is good, but I want to see it as percentage. By the way, you can drag and drop the same field in value area multiple times. Now this I want to keep, but this I want as percentage, 100% here broken down here. Most people type a formula outside, obviously bad idea. Don't ask me why, try it out, then you'll understand why it is bad or take my word for it. You want Excel to give you percentage. That's a local problem because I'm only talking about part of the pivot table. So right click, look at all the options. No, 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 maybe. No, but this some already done. Ah, this one show values as now look at all the buttons and see what it is trying to tell me. So many options to see the same data. This is also learn all possible useful things. So now what do I want to do? 
percent of grand total or column total both will give me the same thing one click and done now another thing many people want month on month growth or decline again they will put a formula here this minus that and drag no bad right click same thing now if you spend little time looking at it i am doing it fast because i want to show you more but you should take your time to read through abhi to life chalu hua hai the time you are going to spend looking at and noticing each button is very valuable because you have the need these guys are the solution if you don't look at them you have the need you will find some weird slow inefficient solution and lifelong you will be inefficient so the idea is to learn the skill of noticing these things these things are solutions to what your needs so you have to learn to discover your needs behind every button you see that is called an efficient thought process that's your training program look at the button notice it think of what it must be doing and say oh no that is what it does acha acha next time zarurat padega to use karega so once you know that that mapping is what will make you super efficient so in this case what do we want to do percent difference from so what i want to do is percent difference from now notice my cursor currently is in may so it's taken may as the item it is showing me percent difference from may what is the problem what is the problem everything is compared to may is that what i wanted no so this is good but this was good if i was comparing every other month to may so i made a mistake no problem let's go to the same thing percent difference from and look at it carefully there are drop downs all drop downs should be opened and ideally you should guess what should be there in the drop down but most people can't guess that microsoft knows that you know need previous month so now this is month on month growth and in order to see it clearly whenever there is a negative and positive together we don't understand the difference much so it's important to visualize it so you go to conditional formatting and put a bar chart there that way you understand the difference much better it quantifies the numbers for you this is important because we are not good at reading and interpreting we are much better at seeing and interpreting because evolutionary vision is there genetically reading came acquired so acquired skills are always poorer than genetic skills that's why data which is difficult to interpret just by reading it should be converted to something which is visual that's what leads to the analytics field called data visualization and we will see it as we go along so this is how what is the bottom line now learn pivot table learn all these things and life will be good okay now let's look at uh, some other things as well in excel many things which i showed you you will have to explore for example i showed you this what is this conditional formatting i showed you only one kind of conditional formatting now this is already summarized data i am interpreting it i am interpreting it means exactly what will i think of in my mind that excel can't tell me but the same data can tell me many things that's what we are talking about learn all possible useful things so earlier we looked at multiple columns we correlated them and got multiple reports here i already have it in front of me i want to interpret so how do you improve the interpretation by making it more visual that's where conditional formatting is one of the ways so if i put that data bar now notice without reading the numbers i can understand and when i change something everything will change dynamically it looks at the range if there is a negative of course it will be red and so this is one way of comparing any number with any number and looking at the magnitude of the numbers there is another one called color scale which color codes those numbers so the highest number is given one color lowest number is given one color and in between numbers are given a mixture so looking at the pattern of distribution of colors i get an overall picture but this for a few items not a very good idea then we have to classify sometimes low numbers high numbers so this is a good idea three categories four categories five categories how does it look at it it takes the range divides it into three equal parts 33% 66 100 like that so now notice the same data told me three different things 
Like that, suppose I want to see the fluctuation of data. One thing is I can draw a chart like this. But then numbers are not seen. Now if I put numbers on it, again it becomes what? More confusing. So yes, this is a method. But if I want a separate by, uh, by line chart for each of them, which will give me better clarity, what do I do? So I select this, go to where? Insert spark line. There is another kind of line chart here called spark line. And then I use this and say this is my data and it actually draws separate charts here. This is another way. So like that, what I'm basically trying to tell you is exactly the same thing which I showed you earlier. Why learn few things? Learn all possible things. So now here, how do I learn all possible things? Just select the data, click on this guy. This is a very irritating button, but remember irritating means very useful. Immediately click on it, pounce on it. And then what I just did one by one, it is saying, why are you wasting your life? Just come to me. I will show you all this. Don't click, just hover. Do you understand? Oh, you wanted charts? We don't even know which chart will look good. No problem. I will tell you the charts based on your data. These are called recommended charts. Similarly, you may want total. Why only look at some? I'll show you all of them. Now you decide which one you want. Horizontal plus vertical and the spark line which I showed you. Line chart. This is again another implementation of the thought which we just saw. So wherever you touch there is value. You have to start noticing, start exploring and start finding the right, uh, right method or feature to use in the given context. Don't limit yourself by saying Kaam ho gaya, aage sikhega nahi. that is what is going to lead to lifelong inefficiency. So with that, let's switch tracks and look at that file and what happened to that file and how do we store files and all that. In order to do that, let's create a new file so that you understand the whole life cycle. Well, I'm sure you're going to be creating lots of files in your life. Let me just scan the questions in the meantime. Any specific question you want me to handle right now? Uh, we, you know, we learn this several times, but we tend to forget if you're not using those features. So any guidance on that? Yeah, so the way you learn matters. If you're learning reactively, you will forget because you want a quick fix. Kidar thought ka hai? Go to Google, jo post page pe aya. You did it. Job done. We never thought why it worked. What was the fundamental behind it? If that is the quick fix mentality, of course you will forget. But if you change your mindset in saying, there are so many things in front of me, all of them are sitting there to help me. And I'm not looking at them. Once you go proactively and start exploring the capability, then mapping it to business, that thought process which went on, even if you don't use it, it will remain in your mind much longer. And eventually, maybe after 10 years, the need arises, the brain will prompt you saying, go here, approximately somewhere it is there and you will figure it out. Even if you don't remember exactly where to click, by then you have 100% guarantee that if you have a need, that solution is there somewhere. It's just a question of finding it. So the approach matters and then brain will definitely scale up. Even brain is not utilized fully. So we are actually proactively increasing not just utilization of office features, but even our brain capacity. Okay, so let's actually go through the process of files. I'm taking Excel file as an example, but potentially you could do it for any file, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So I'm just creating some sample data. Don't worry how it is done. So now I have to save this file and this is a everyday decision where to save the file. Actually, there is no decision. Everyone goes and says save as local drive. That's a, this is your enemy. Don't go there. Go here, one drive, and then of course save the file. Where is this file? This is one drive. One drive is cloud. So where did this file get saved? If I ask this question, everyone in the world will confidently say, oh, this file got saved on one drive. That is absolutely wrong. The file got saved on my local drive first and then it will go to OneDrive. What is the thing you learn here? 
you don't have to be possessive about local drive local drive this file is also on local drive but it is not as helpless as a file you would directly save on this pc why because it is on this pc but now this file has become intelligent enough to synchronize itself with the cloud the moment it synchronizes you will see this icon once you do that you can shut off your pc open your mobile go to one drive and edit that file there also or any other device or any machine in the world which has internet connection that is the benefit you got once these files are synced then you lose your laptop or whatever hard disk fails get a new hard disk login all files will sync again so there is automatic backup and restore now the most important part is when we need inputs from others when we are collaborating with each other how do we really collaborate on files whether it is data or otherwise how do we collaborate let me ex explain <laughs> So we'll take the same example which we had taken earlier and then go from there. We'll come back to Excel and file sharing, don't worry. So suppose I have this file and I want to create a budget for next quarter. This is one activity. But in order to actually perform that task, what did I have to do? I had to do a lot of sub activities. First, I had to get some data. So I got some data, put it, copy pasted it, made something. Then I realized I don't have some data. I need to get data from people. So some people I called, some people I chatted with, some people I did a meeting, some people I sent a mail or all of the above. And then some people send me files also. Then again, I consolidated, copy pasted, created a draft file, sent it to my bosses. Bosses gave me inputs, another iteration. Then they said, okay, now let's come for a meeting and finalize. So what happened? One activity, which was one sentence here, resulted in 15 different activities for me, including which required me to use five different apps. That is called inefficiency. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a better way of doing that. There is. All the things which I talked about are necessary. Do you, can you avoid phone calls? No. Can you avoid chat? No, none of these can be avoided. I'm talking corporate, not personal. Even then, none of these can be avoided. But each one of them has a separate app. So that's why Microsoft created Teams which can do all of these in one app. And nobody has understood this properly. I would say even Microsoft has not done enough effort to explain this part of Teams to the world. Probably you are using Teams already and comparing it with Zoom or WhatsApp or WebEx, that's fine. But you are comparing only this part or this part. What about the rest? So expand the horizon, understand the capabilities of what Teams is there to offer, discover your needs behind Teams. So this, set of random activities I performed is called teamwork, by the way. And if you again classify that, what was I saying? I was asking questions to people. If it was urgent, I would do chat. If it was not urgent, I would send a mail. Same way files. If it is urgent, I will do it in a group chat. Otherwise, I will send attachments and then meetings. All of this inefficient. So files are becoming inefficient because if I want inputs from someone else, I would be sending an attachment or put it in chat either way copies. So now no more this. So you go to share. There are multiple options. Don't do this. This is an anonymous link. You want to specify people like you would go to an email, attach the file and put their names. You do it here. Now remember when I email a file to someone attachment, what they do with that file, you will never know. They can send it to someone else. Will they inform you? No. Will you come to know? No. So sending files as attachments is not safe also because you have no audit trail, no visibility to exactly what happened after that. Not only that, when you send a file as attachment to people, they may send the edited version of the file back to you. But what else they did with it, you will never know. They may use that data, say I created it and take credit for it. How do you know? So you are not in control. Whereas here, for a change, you are in control. You can allow or not allow editing. If you refuse editing, that means read only. But they should not copy paste and select all. Yes, so block download, that is also under your control. Now in this case, I want to allow editing, so I am allowing editing, click apply. Now I can put names of people who are supposed to be providing me data. So this is a person from my company, so it understood its name. 
this is another person from my company understood its name but by all means you should be able to do this please don't block external sharing people are going to require to talk to each other and send files externally officially what is the harm let them do it if you don't do it they will send attachments that is inefficient and unsafe so now i am sending what i am sending a mail but i am sending a link now that link went to these three people now one person was from outside the company okay so does that person need office 365 microsoft license microsoft account no nothing of that sort nothing of that sort is required that person needs a browser and internet connection that is all and once that is done let's see what happens on the other end so this is my other user assistant a for assistant got this mail what is there in the mail just a link click on the link this person is opening it on browser now right side assistant has the file open left side nitin has the file open there are two different people technically for demo purpose i am showing it on one screen split but this person could be using desktop this person could be using mobile browser linux doesn't matter and notice wherever i click here this person knows where i am wherever this person clicks it and vice versa so if i change something here let me change the zoom level if i change something here so nitin is changing this to 11 it changed here now this guy changed it to 13 so there's no locking you would have done it anyway by copy pasting when these people send files to you this is happening live so what is the idea multiple copies of file no one copy multiple people editing yes any copy paste required no less effort and more impact this is how it works right now there are two people there is no upper limit there could be 20 30 people also editing simultaneously no problem at all now if i did something here and then someone said no no who changed it oh no problem right click there and this feature right now only on browser you say show changes it actually shows who changed what there is a full audit trail and although we created this file right now it automatically creates versions so notice there are versions available in just 7 minutes it has created two versions for every file up to 500 versions are created and it even shows changes and you can actually go back and change them or restore the file if required if someone made a mistake or deleted something by d or uh, unintentionally or intentionally so this is how simultaneous editing happens so now you must have understood how useful this is now the external party which we sent it to will have to put an extra otp so that's also making it even more safe to send it bottom line all new files must go to one drive no questions asked why not because i am saying because of all the benefits you are getting to recap these are the benefits now have you not understood anything ask me questions yeah i am recording it and i will send it to great big yeah. yeah. thank you thanks okay so these are the benefits now this is as far as files being collaborated with in the context of email we have improved very good what about chat so that's another very nice thing about teams chat maybe many of you don't use teams chat in personal but in corporate and in study context in v school start using teams for all your work so what happens in teams like any other chat software it has a chat thing but it has some many nice features which you may not be aware of yes compared to other chat software teams looks more formal it may even look more clunky but remember this is designed and optimized for corporate use not for personal use so there are some really nice features which you would it those would grow on you one of them is when you are communicating data in chat in business you will need tables so this gives you tables as simple as that tables are here okay next maybe some of your developers they will love this feature what do we have here we have code snippets it supports 50 plus different programming languages including syntax coloring line numbering indentation and so on 
but something for everyone many times in chat people put lots of text lots of text means really verbose text and this is a common problem for everything right so how do you read this text whether it is in word one note outlook whatever so look at this immersive reader i'm just going to mute for one minute give me a minute so what is this whenever you have lot of text and you want to read it with focus we want least amount of distraction so this is immersive reader available in word one note outlook and edge browser what does it do it makes it full screen so that there are no distractions number one second you can like a e reader you can change whatever you like in terms of the color scheme then by the way technically or from a medical research point of view this font is designed for improving comprehension visually so try that first then it also has other options do you want to see the whole paragraph or focus on a small one and then you can also have a dictionary and translation live along with pronunciation and right so right now everything is online online because my language and it has a picture dictionary as well so it's a beautiful tool to focus and read long text this works on any browser page also if you use edge if the browser pages are compatible now one of the things which people get irritated with in terms of teams chat is it shows meetings also in it we will see why it shows and as i said earlier if anything is irritating it has to be useful but before that let's talk about files because what were we saying file sharing if you send links in email has become efficient what about chat so that is the best part of teams when you upload a file to teams and uh, in a group chat or one on one chat so here assistant boss and zeus are chatting i upload a file here all of them open it it's not three copies it's one copy that is the best part so all the benefits of one drive you saw are available in team chat so collaboration becomes easier whether it is urgent collaboration in chat or not so urgent collaboration using email so file problem solved now if you want to see all the files you have shared with anybody there is a files area here on that you will see one drive and in one drive there is a folder called microsoft team chat files so this will give you a comprehensive list of all the files you have shared with anybody else in team chat so that's a single repository and of course this has all the benefits of one drive so if i go here i can change sharing and all that so currently if i have forgot whom i have shared it with all of that can be found from here all right now coming back to teams and in terms of collaboration we do meetings all the time you are going to be doing lots of meetings in life meetings happen also in teams and when meetings happen meetings have nothing to do with chat so in fact uh, that diagram which i showed you of different apps how many tools you could have used for conducting audio video call so many of them thousands of them now what happens in all these tools whether it is zoom or webex or skype or google xyz abc there is a start meeting button and there is an end meeting button when you click on the end meeting button everyone goes away meeting is finished yeah right what does teams do teams is over smart and people get very irritated with that any chat is supposed to show you what any chat software i mean what is it supposed to show you it is supposed to show you people yes team shows that people groups yes it shows groups but it also shows you something else called meetings why why does it show you meetings people don't like it they get irritated confused so remember whenever there is an irritating feature don't you think microsoft thought people are going to get irritated with it of course they know they still kept it taking a risk of customer dissatisfaction what does that mean that feature must be really useful for humanity so that's why i said any irritating thing learn it first so think about it when you do a meeting what happens you plan the meeting then the meeting here there is a start meeting button end meeting button okay meeting khatam aage kuch nahi karna hai kuch bhi nahi karna hai what about this 
if you had no follow up action after the meeting probably the meeting itself was useless of course there is something to be followed up after the meeting but generally what do we do because we obviously have never thought about it properly what do we do yes of course i want to send all these to people after the meeting and now the meeting software has said ha mera kaam ho gaya tum jo karna hai karo so hum jo karna hai karte hain we will go to calendar open the meeting reply to all crowd everyone's life so another dumping ground called inbox so that is called inefficiency so to avoid that inefficiency what happens when you finish a meeting it quietly comes and lands here now this meeting i did with exactly the same people boss and zeus same people for this meeting same people for group chat but i want to follow up about whatever was discussed in the meeting and not mix up that with the chat that's why this is a meeting so everything which i want to do about the meeting post during after can be done here now all of us are working offline online whatever mixed mode so there are many features which are amazing here for example the notes taken during meeting are also visible here nowadays we have a transcript all the files shared before during after the meeting are available here you don't have to scratch your head and think a whiteboard which was used during the meeting is also available here and it's still alive for interaction but probably this is the most powerful thing look at it teams is designed to integrate with 300 plus third party applications and you should use them probably some of them you are already using so this is called revolution what am i saying probably it's still not gone deep into your mind every meeting you conduct in wellinger and corporate now for your business and studies the follow up after the meeting should not happen by sending mails and reply to all it should happen in this chat that is called revolution that is called efficiency less effort more impact in fact in this case dramatically lesser number of mails also so less mails more clarity is also inefficiency to efficiency so that is how everything improves now you do lot of meetings as well so let's talk a couple of things about meetings then i'll show you some new things in power bi and then we are running out of time actually unfortunately so what uh, 11 right yeah so correct 9 to 11 right so you you'll be okay with that after that Yeah, yeah, I'll cover yeah, this yeah. part and then Power BI. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any specific topic you want me to make sure yeah, I don't miss? Yeah. Uh, sir, um, another fifteen uh, twenty minutes of uh, Doctor Paranjay's uh, yeah, session. Yeah. Probably later on, the remaining time we can take student questions. Some questions, okay, fair enough. Right. Thank you. So then, switch. Uh, let's switch to. one part of teams and then directly go to how to do meetings and all that probably you are already uh, aware of so yeah once they get it yeah. will, uh, only thing is there are projects which we do and i'm sure you will do lot of projects <laughs> how do you do projects projects means there is a group of people typically with different department different batches whatever and there is a plan multiple tasks related to each other and there is a deadline now this requires lot of coordination generally there will be some external parties also may be involved whether it is internal or external these people are not meeting every day to see kya kiya so we need to inform everyone to keep everyone in sync and the only method the world uses today is a send a mail 14 people in cc everyone is doing that how many mails will you get 14 people 14 cc 3 months 18 working days this is just one activity one project imagine all kinds of things about the project coming to inbox one project second project third project plus regular mail we are literally drowning in email kaun se angle se efficient dikhta hai nahi dikhta so what is the problem there is nothing wrong with email or inbox the problem is misuse inappropriate use means everyone gets one inbox yes everyone is going to be a part of multiple activities yes so something which is always one should not be used to manage something which is never going to be one that is called inefficiency so start using teams how do you use teams very simple don't create a group chat go to the teams part of teams very very important and then create a team 
create a team from scratch, add your people there and then manage the project there inside teams. So once you create a team, what happens? If I have not created teams and I'm a part of five projects, my life will look like this. I want to know what is happening in a project. Where do I go? Dumping ground, search for the project name, thousand results, kuch samjhani. Compare that with teams. I come to teams, no search required. Each project is separate. Within each project, I don't have to click on each one of them, only the unread one. Difference between inefficiency, efficiency. That's why one project, one place, put everything there and life is good. And within the project, whatever you want, you can do. You can create further channels and you can add files there. So remember, if a file is being created for a project, do not put it on one drive. Put it directly in Teams. You can go to Teams. This is my project. This project has multiple channels. So if there is a file about event management, go to Files tab in Event Management and create the file there. If it is already a file, move it here. Like that, all the benefits of OneDrive you will get here. Plus another benefit, when you put a file here, all team members can see it. All the discussion you do here. This is like chat, but this has a different reply functionality. So all the replies get consolidated, structured versus unstructured. And then you can also add, very importantly, a shared task list here. Shared task list here. And then your actual project plan should be added there. So no more floating Excel files. So what happens here? You add the task list, create buckets, add tasks, delegate them. Everyone can see this by progress, by assigned to. This is like a Kanban view, graphic view. You can see all your tasks across projects in one place and see all the tasks in a to -do app called To Do App. So my work should be listed in Outlook tasks project specific work in teams and a consolidated view of all of them in to do app. That's how you work properly. Start using this and you'll be amazed as to how efficient you are. Now switching tracks, let's see another thing which is available in X context of analytics called Power BI. It is not a replacement to Excel. It is an adjunct to Excel. What does it do? So it also allows you to import data like we saw earlier, get data, but this has many more types of data it can import from. Some of them are common with Excel, some of them are not and the cleanup engine is common. It's called Power Query. So look at this online services, so many different data types. All these are free connectors. So whatever I'm showing you right now is for free. If you want to publish a report and share it on web, then you have to go for the paid version but that we can figure out later. So what do you do here? I showed you some raw data earlier. So let's look at the same data and see how X compared to Excel Power BI will give us additional analytical tools and visualizations. So what do we do here? I am opening the same file. Same file means the same data which I had shown you earlier the transactions type of data. Now that data I imported in Power BI and based on Power BI, I have created a dashboard. If that same data was here, what would I have done? I would have created multiple pivot tables, multiple charts and that's it. Whereas in Power BI, with the same data, I can create dashboards like this. Same data. First, let me show you the data so you understand. This is the same data, date, month, year, card type, expense type, gender amount. Fine. Some few extra columns, but doesn't matter. Now, based on this, what have I done? I have actually created a dashboard like this. How easy it is to create? Let me show you from scratch. So these are different types of visuals. It's like the insert chart menu in Excel. This is where we have all the columns of data. So I have many columns. Now you drag drop like in Excel. So I want to see class of city. I dragged and dropped. Then I want to see amount. Okay. I dragged and drop on top of it. This is like a pivot table only, but now I can create a different type of chart like this. So either I choose the visual first and then drag drop or I first drag drop and then choose the visual like that multiple visuals and I can just rearrange them wherever I like using this method. I've done this. 
but notice there is city and state so uh, unlike excel when there is something called city technically it is a piece of text but here we have something called data category this is also available in power pivot in excel you can say that yes this is text but treat it as a city that puts this geography icon here so there are different types of categories available many of them for geographical things so because of this now when i drag drop a city it will not just give me text it will actually draw a map properly based on which city we are talking about like that now depending on what city i have it will filter it out so based on that i have created this dashboard simple drag drop having said that what else can we do technically speaking i could have done this in excel also in excel also there is a 3d map but what is the difference here these things are now correlated so if i click on gender equal to female this will filter everything else now i click on it again filter is gone i want to click on food now this becomes the filter everything gets filtered now many times what happens this is all good but some people don't understand dashboards people are dumb when the same dashboard is shown, shown to 20 people in the meeting and you ask them what did you learn 20 people have learned 20 different things so you want to use ai to show the interpretation also there so you don't waste time that is where ai comes into picture there is a beautiful thing here called smart narrative this is a visual notice i have already created some reports i am just clicking on smart narrative what is it doing it is actually looking at what i have on this dashboard with my data and it has interpreted it for me and although as though that is not enough now if i click on gender exactly the same filter will happen but now this data changes and versus male this data changes or if i change the filter to something else notice the interpretation is changing this is out of the box zero cost ai based analytics now i'm sure you have seen people showing reports in wherever they make reports whatever boss wants make them in whatever tool they have copy paste in powerpoint show once they show obviously some other question is going to come for which you are not prepared abhi boss to puchega na kya hua ye kya tha june 54000 this is july aisa kaisa hua kyun hua what is the answer i will get back to you that is analytical inefficiency why are you saying i'll get back to you because you can't make the report there okay you will go back and then make a report by what by class by city by state by card type by gender all of them no few of them so again we are learning only few things and delaying the process so how do you make life more impactful and agile and immediate uh, you already know the answer what is the problem i want to know what happened in july so right click there and ask power bi to explain the decrease so this uses artificial intelligence ranks all these other fields in order of influence and shows you kya tha pehle june tha june mein itna tha july this this gap can be explained everyone went down but tamil nadu maharashtra and rajasthan were the biggest contributors this is the biggest contributor of this decrease next contributor is gender females spent less males also spent less and so on and so forth this is called learning all possible useful things and as though this is not enough this is a very sophisticated method of asking questions this is the last demo and then we will take your questions what do i mean by asking questions you can ask questions like we did in excel but this guy has a much wider vocabulary it understands lot of complex natural language questions like dates equality names pronouns various commands like this and it allows you to refine this so the natural language q and a part in power bi is extremely well evolved and let me try my luck today and check what is it saying there ask a question right so let me try to ask a question using voice so in windows if you have windows 10 nowadays nowadays in windows 10 we have a feature called voice to text based on ai so enable that 
Windows H is the shortcut. So it actually it copied that. So now I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to speak and it is going to listen to my question and then answer that question. Let me make this bigger so that you see what it is doing. Windows H. I'm going to ask a question. Give me amount by class. Amount by class. This is how powerful this is. You don't even have to type the question. You can ask the question. So please explore Power BI. Whatever data you have in Excel, the same thing can be imported in Power BI. And the same data tells you more. Bottom line, giving us the same thing which we have been saying for a long time now. Learn all possible useful things. So with that, what is your call to action? Learn all these tools. Use them in an integrated manner. Don't be... Having a myopic view ki mera kaam ho raha hai to ho gaya, utna hi mere ko samajh na hai. There are thousands of features waiting to be exploited. And if you don't take proactive effort, you will be inefficient like everyone else is in the world today. So change the world by becoming more efficient. And in that context, I will tell you how much work is pending for you. There are 14,000 features if you really look at all of them. Most people in the world irrespective of their seniority and country use 150 and that too they misuse it so change the trend don't say i don't need it i don't want to know it change that into an opportunity and then you can grow beyond your wildest imagination so use office 365 as a catalyst to your growth that's it thank you all the links you will find on this page yeah, I think that is uh, visualization part of Power BI and data connectivity is much bigger and Excel is a spreadsheet and Excel, one of the things Excel does is, is analysis whereas Power BI is designed for analysis. In Excel, everything is read, right? Whereas in Power BI, when you import data, it is read only. You can only create calculations on top of it. You can't really edit data in Power BI. So they are adjuncts to each other, not replacement. So if you're already making a report in Excel, continue making it in Excel. Don't just recreate the report in Power BI. It is not going to add value. Understand what Power BI is doing, which is useful to you, but Excel can't do and use it in their context. Absolutely. So, there are a lot of irritating features which you have said that we should learn it first. Is there any difference between uh, Office various editions which you which we could see there is a standard edition there is a professional edition there is a student edition yeah so do, is there any of the differences which we find in the pictures yes there are a lot of differences but for Mota Mota what you have all of you as students have access to Office 365 A3 that is the best edition to have because there are desktop versions of Office and there is a Office 365 version of Office which you have. So like I showed you that automatic data analytics that happened because of machine learning. Where is that data center? Where is that machine learning algorithm sitting in cloud that cannot be installed on desktop? So desktop versions of office do not have these connected experiences. They cannot have those because the infrastructure required simply cannot fit on a desktop. So that's why I'm saying you have no idea how fortunate you are that you are getting this entire stack of tools and the best version in your hand, hand use it to your advantage. The question is, uh, in a two years tenure, they will have access to this, but what happens after that? Will they still be connected with, that, with the OneDrive data? Will they be able to retrieve our month? Yeah, so I'm sure the, this OneDrive is being provided to you by your organization or your college. Fine. But when you leave, if you have some project data, obviously Wellinker is not going to give you lifelong access to your student version of OneDrive. But if you have your data, your projects, you can always take backup before you leave. No problem at all. And then, of course, there's a personal version of OneDrive also. In fact, uh, many students do go for the personal student and edition as well, which actually is family level. So you get six copies of office with one drive so you get six terabyte of data and that costs some 500 rupees per month that's a very good investment in the long run
and when you join corporates most of the corporates are already using office 365 so this as whatever you will learn in these two hours or two years or whatever time about office platform will be absolutely invaluable when you join wherever you do so is there a difference between a one drive and a sharepoint so one drive one drive yeah, yeah so one drive is and teams both underlying technology is sharepoint so technically speaking one drive is a document library in sharepoint but it has been given special treatment because one drive everyone gets one one drive and when i put a file on one drive only one person can see it and independent of your sharepoint quota at organization level each one drive gets one terabyte of space so special treatment document library is one drive sir uh, in india we have found that uh, majorly it is uh, uh, android dominated mobile and chats or with the apps or this so can we connect the google calendar with the teams or maybe the some of the is there a yeah, yeah so of... so everything is connected and all the tools which i told you about are also available on mobile except for two tools sway which is a web page creation tool and forms which have to be browser based everything else is available on android and ios and if you have an android phone and you have outlook installed and you have a google calendar in outlook you can go and go to settings and say sync with your mobile so it'll sync with android calendar as well so that that's possible i can shift between the two different yeah. platforms in this yeah one of my experience of course that has not come up on this world. we have found that in india in the corporate world we found that up to a certain level maybe a manager and above they found that they give the access to office microsoft products and below that uh, it is maybe open office or some kind of other or maybe in certain uh, insurance sector uh, we have come across at the branch level they have open office and the central office as a mess office so do you have any tips to working between uh, these two different uh, editions so there it is a uh, calc and here it is excel is that yeah so that calc? trend is uh, changing now yes i do agree that senior people will get a higher or costlier version of office and uh, junior uh, people will get lesser version agree but now it is not office or open office or something like that so just to show you that i don't uh, deal in this but most people who are junior now get the even version of office which doesn't have office on desktop but it has all the browser editions so whatever features i showed you a subset of those will be available but the integration will be exactly the same as what i said so there is no platform difference in that sense the platform is still valid only whether it is available on desktop or not decides whether they are paying this or this that's it for now thank you